Okay, time to deweight the machine. We're getting ready to apply Deso dye uh, and a couple things, we, we just made a very basic saw cut. So when you're saw cutting, you don't want to have one color bleed onto an adjoining area. So for example, we're going to leave these areas uncolored. So just a quick uh, method of masking. I'll use blue or green painter's tape. Don't ever uh, use a high, high build tape like duct tape. But one of the keys is to make sure that this edge of the tape right here touches this edge of the saw cut and the reason for that is then you fold it down in there so you can just take your uh, take a straight edge and fold the tape down in there and just by folding it in there like you see that it prevents it from bleeding and wicking up underneath once, once we have the saw cut all taped off we come back with our masking plastic right over the top of that and then unfold it and that's a sure way to, to prevent bleeding or contamination of the other side. Now, here is a mistake I'll see sometimes with contractors out on a project is they spray the dye too heavy and they don't clean any dye residue and then when you go to your next grit, it smears onto the adjoining area. So do yourself a favor. A lot of people think that the dye penetrates all the way. Make sure you clean it. Just do yourself a favor, especially if you have uncolored sections. Once you've dyed it, clean it with an auto scrubber, a damp mop, a rag if it's small, a sponge, whatever. Doesn't take a lot of water, just uh, get that residue off before you go to the next step. Um, also the type of sprayer that you use is very, very important. It has to be uh, acetone or solvent resistant and what's really important is the type of conical tip that you use, meaning a cone tip. You want the dye to just fog out there in a mist. You don't want to have a, a, a pattern where the orifice is so large that it just it really dispenses too much dye out on the surface. So uh, we'll get this masked up and uh, show you how to apply the dye. Okay, to recap, we have brought this floor up to a 200 grit pad, if you recall. So now we've cleaned the surface and we're going to apply our first coat of dye. Understand, every concrete is different and even these uh, the self-leveling overlays like Param uh, uh, 6000 sets at different rates. So just because we're doing it at this sequence doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do it. Um, I've found uh, through the years that this is a great sequence to apply color at after the two, right now after the 200 grit. Some will uh, like to do it after the 100 grit. To me the 200 grit is so aggressive it takes too much color off so I find that this is a good balance. All right? um, a couple things, just the basics of staining or dyeing. Number one, use an acid resistant, or excuse me, a solvent resistant sprayer and uh, you always want to have a bucket. I'll see guys out on a job site just walk right across the job like this and all of a sudden their sprayer starts to drip and now you'll see that in the floor and it won't go away even after you polish it. So you want to try to always start the tip of your spray in the bucket and then go right out onto the slab. Now for demonstration purposes I'm going to show you here um, this is actually a drip free sprayer so watch this. When I let off you don't see it dripping, which is huge if you're out on a big job and you have to stop for whatever reason and you don't have a bucket. Uh, it's really nice to, to have this non-drip sprayer. Okay, I'm going to come right out of the bucket. Notice how I'm fogging it on. I don't spray directly on the saw cut. I'm always spraying away from this edge so we don't get that bleeding. Once, uh, once we let this set for several minutes, we'll come back and just run a damp sponge over it. Once that's dry, it's on to the next step, which is our 400 grit. Back into the bucket. And that's the basics of uh, how you should be applying your, your acetone dye. Now, I have done several projects successfully 
without a saw cut. So you don't always have to saw cut like we've done here. That's a traditional way. Then typically what we would do after it's all done and polished, we would fill that saw cut with a sanded tile grout, perhaps in a contrasting color so it becomes an aesthetic thing. It looks very nice. But you can mask off your designs. And if you use this type of sprayer with the technique that I just showed you, it will not wick up underneath, okay? Then of course you could reverse the masking onto where you just dyed and do a different color if you chose to. So, all right, we can uh, lightly sponge this off, okay? And then uh, we'll remove the masking and move on to our 400 grit. We've applied our, uh, our first application of our solvent dye, removed the masking, we've kind of cleaned off the residue. Now if you look at the bottom of the machine, we have the red pad on, which is our 400 grit. The way that this is shaping up, we'll probably start to see a little bit of a polish. Typically, uh, in the industry, what we refer to as the wow factor is usually after the 800 grit, that's when the floor starts to pop. But I'm kind of uh, anticipating we might see a shine after this grit. So uh, let's get busy on our 400 grit and see what we get. Once again, speed of the machine, up one notch. Now, a quick observation. I'm not just going to run into the die. I'm just going to go ahead. You can leave that on. I'm just going to go right over it and see if we're getting any swirling. In other words, any bleed over. So if I look, we've done a thorough job of cleaning. So rather than just go to town and find out that it's bleeding for whatever reason, just do a small test like I showed you. We've run our 400 grit, uh, we've remasked, and now it's time for our second application of the Deso die. Here we go. Notice how it's misting on. By applying the two coats like this, it's just going to give us nice color intensity. And when we come over here to the end, remember the tip goes directly right back into the bucket. All right, so we'll give this a quick cleaning like we did to get that little bit of dye residue off and uh, unveil it and then run right over to our 800 grit. And that's gonna, uh, that's gonna give us that wow factor and we'll start to see a, a little bit of a shine in a gloss. All right, we're ready for our next step. We've applied our second application of the Deso dye. We've, uh, since it's such a small area, we just uh, sponged it off and then we took a dry cloth and just wiped the residue off. Now it's time to uh, apply our Hermatex colloidal silica. Um, basically, it's a four to one ratio, four parts water to one part Hermatex. And if you look, I, I brought it up in an earlier video, these little uh, measure cups are, are really brilliant because it already, it already gives you the ratios, the mixed ratios. So if you look here, it says four to one. And what we're going to do is we've filled the water on the left-hand column to the three level. Now all we're going to do is we're going to take our, uh, our Hermitex and we're going to fill it up to this level on the three side. And that gives you a four to one ratio. We're going to mix that uh, just briefly with a stir stick. And uh, then we're going to apply it with a pump sprayer. Now because of the, the fineness of this material, um, you can simply just spray it on. It uh, doesn't really require agitating um, or massaging it in. So you can just spray it on and we're going to let it set for 30 minutes and then come back and we're going to go to our next step, which is our 800 grit. And this is where we should start to, start to finally see a, a pretty good shine on it. And then we'll follow that up with our 1500 grit. And after that, put our topical protectant on and give that a burnish. And we should have a really, really beautiful 
beautiful floor using our Param 6000. So now obviously on a much larger job, I'd be using a big sprayer, you know, a two to three gallon sprayer, not this little one. But for this demonstration, this will work just fine. I'm gonna always check the stream of my spray first. And it looks like it's spraying just fine. All right, here we go. You can see how it's darkening the substrate. So this is going to help harden and densify our overlayment and it's going to also contribute to giving us that nice shine that we're after. Notice how beautiful that glass is when it's wet, it's just really pretty.